lovelies you're welcome back to my youtube channel thank you so much for clicking in and in today's tutorial we're going to be learning how to make this pleated tuban cap which has this twisted design crinoline embellishment and multiple design on it all made with a non-stretchy fabric if you are just joining us for the first time kindly do well to subscribe to our channel and also don't forget to click on the bell icon i intended to share this tutorial with us in celebration of my birthday which was on 19th february and i hope you get value from it the materials used include satin fabric big size of crinoline which is about six inches wide We'll also be needing the small size of crinoline, which is about 2 inches wide. We'll be needing the wording, scissors, measuring tape, matching color of thread and your needle, as well as gum and other accessories, such as your appliques, your trimmings, your stones, your brooch, and so on for embellishment. For this tutorial, our design is divided into two parts. We have the tuban base and then the designs attached to the tuban base. Now for the tuban base, it's a round pleated band with a handle at the back for tying and the base. The base is lined. And then coming over to the design, we have the twisted design, we have the crinoline design and we also have the bow design. Now, to start with, I have my tuban cap already sewn, and so it's on this tuban cap that we're going to be adding our design. So I'll just set this aside. Now, I'll be starting the tutorial with an illustration on how to achieve the pleated tuban cap using a different video. And as soon as we are done with this, we'll go ahead to work on the design which is added on it i'm very sorry about the length of the video it's an old video which i just joined together for the purpose of this tutorial now for this tutorial we're working on this on a tuban base using a non-stretchy fabric and it's going to be having a pleated band and then i have my fabric cut out already before now so I'll be stating out the measurements for each piece of fabric. Now, the design is divided into the band, which is the pleated band, the base, and also the handle at the back for tying. Now, I have my first piece of fabric, which is the fabric for my band. This is it. Now, the width from this end to this end is 12 inches, while the length, the full length is 28 inches. So for the first piece of fabric, which is for the band, the measurement is 12 inches, by 28 inches now this is it for that then coming over to the fabric for the base we'll be needing two different pieces of fabric because the the cap is going to be lined due to the light nature of the certain fabric we are using in order to give it some weight and then i have two pieces of fabric here now the measurement for each piece of fabric is 15 inches for the width from this end to this end, the width is 15 inches, while the length from this end down to this other end, the full length is 28 inches also. And then you cut out two different pieces for it, 28 by 15 inches. So this is going to be for the base and it's going to be lined. And then the last but not the least is the handle. Okay, the handle that is going to be attached to the back of the design. And we'll also be needing two different pieces of fabric. Now, the measurement for each piece of fabric is 5 inches for the width. The width is 5 inches, while the length is 12 inches. So, 5 inches by 12 inches. And then you cut this out twice, two different pieces of fabric. So, in total, we have about 5 different pieces of fabric for the base. Now, coming down to the tutorial properly, we are going to be starting with the band, which is going to be pleated. And now to do that, I have my fabric right here before me. So I will start by folding in one inch, probably with, by one inch. I will fold it down to the end. And after folding it in this way, I'm going to place on my sewing machine and I'm going to sew it down from one end to the other. Now, as soon as that is done, I will pick up my fabric again and make another pleat okay 
this time around it's going to be resting on the first split this way and then i will sew from one end to the other and then i'll continue again after the second pleat i'll make another pleat until i exhaust the entire width of the fabric that is i get to the end of the end end of the width of the fabric and then after pleating i'll sew down with my needle sorry with my sewing machine and that i'll keep making more pleats till i've pleated this entire fabric now i want to emphasize that while making your pleats the thread should not be visible the only place where the thread is allowed to show it's on the last pleat. That is all. So, as you pleat each fabric, okay, as I pleat this, make this first pleat and sew, so, the second pleat that I'm going to be making on the first pleat should cover the thread from the first pleat, okay? This second pleat should help me hide the thread in that order. As I pleat, the new pleat should cover the thread from the previous layer. So, it is only at the last pleat. At the end of my fabric that is where my um, my sewing thread is allowed to show anyway as soon as we as soon as we are done with it you get what i'm saying better so i'm going back now to pleat and sew my fabric and then i'll get back at this point i'm done sewing and then this is my work this is how it comes out to be now if you observe if you look carefully you will see that the sewing thread is showing only on the last split okay that's how it's supposed to be and then the previous splits have hidden the thread from the previous split so each new split hides the thread from the previous split so this is it and then the last split has the thread only so this is how it looks like so after pleating my fabric this is what i get now to continue we'll be adding the base to our work so i'm going to get the first base okay i'm going to be placing it fine side i'm going to be placing the fine side facing me and the wrong side facing my working table then i'm going to get my bands that i just finished working on and i'm going to be placing it on it this way again now the fine side of the band is facing the fine side of my fabric. Of That is the fabric for the base. And then lastly, I will get the second band. And then I will place the fine side to face the fine side of the fabric on the working tape. That is for the band. The base, fine side facing fine side. So I will place it down this way. So this is what I get. Now I am going to get this on my sewing machine. And... I'm going to be stitching this edge down and I'm going to come down and stitch every other edge okay but along one side of my fabric I'm going to leave a little bit of allowance for turning my fabric inside out now mark you why you position your fabric to sew you have to sew alongside this last line so that this sewing thread here is not visible and so I'll position my fabric in a way that I'm going to also sew on the last stitch, okay, the last stitch for the band, the same thing is applicable to the second fabric, so I will get pins to help me hold down this edge while I sew all the way to the end, so then I'm going to get this to my sewing machine, and okay, at this point, at this point, I'm done making my stitches round my fabric, as you can see, so this is this end also this other end also this is the part where i have the band and then this is the base and then at one end i left a few inches allowance for turning my fabric inside out so i will turn my fabric and get back this is my work and i'm done turning it inside out this is the part that has the fine side of the band and this is the wrong side this part has the wrong side of the band so you can see that our fabric has been lined okay and then this is it so what i'm going to be doing now is that i'm going to be joining everything together to form my cap okay please at this point if you have access to electricity it's very important that you iron your fabric to straighten it out and then after doing that i'll fold my fabric into to the sew and I'm going to sew, okay, I'm going to make a straight sewing stitch, starting from the band, which has the pleated base. I will stitch this down, and then stitch all the way to this end. 
and then after that we'll come back to join to attach the handle to the base so that is that okay at this point i'm done stitching and then when i turn my fabric inside out this is what i get okay so this is the fine side this okay. is the back. in addition to all we have done for the cap we're also going to be adding a hand to look at the back for time so as to make it adjustable and to fit different head sizes like I said earlier I have two pieces of fabric for that and each piece of fabric measured 5 inches for the width and 12 inches for the length so I'm going to be folding each piece of fabric into two this way and I'm going to be sewing from one end to the other end but then before then I'm going to trim the edge a bit So I'm going to um, repeat the same thing for the second piece of fabric, okay? And then after that, I will sew. And after sewing, we'll get back to continue. So this is my work, and I'm done sewing. All that is there for me to turn it inside out and attach it to the base. So after turning it inside out, this is it. This is how it's, it will be. This is the back view. Now, I'm going to get my measuring tape. We're going to be attaching our handle to our design, okay? And then, from the right side, I'm going to measure out two inches, okay? And then, from the left side, too, I'll measure out another two inches. Then, from this band, okay, from this middle part here, towards the left side, I'll measure another two inches and I'm going to mark it. So from this middle part to the right, two inches, and from this middle part to the left, two inches. So from this marked line here down to this marked line here, what we have is four inches. Now I will get the first piece of fabric for my band and then ensure that the sewn edge of your band is going to be facing the base. And then I'm going to fold in the fabric inside. You know this um the edge of this fabric is strange, so I'll fold it inside. And I'm going to be placing it this way at the mark edge. I'll pin it down. So when I get to my sewing machine, I'm going to be sewing this part down. I'll stitch this part down. And then I'll get the second fabric and repeat the same thing. So this is my second fabric. The edges have also been folded inside and then i'm going to place it this way so the way it is placed and then i'm also going to put it down to my pin so this is it so this is going to serve as the handle for time after tacking so i'm going to place on my sewing machine and sew this now then place this other end and sew it down so this is my work and then I've stitched down this end. I've also stitched down this end. So when you open it up, it's like this. Now I'm going to fold my, turn my fabric inside out to the wrong side. Now I'm going to get my needle and thread. And I'm going to be running, making a running stitch in order to form my cap. My running stitch will start immediately after the pleat down all the way to this end. So I have my needle and thread here. And I'll be stitching it down. Pass your needle in and out until you get to the end of the fabric. Then secure your thread and cut off the excess, just like we do for a normal two band cap. So, as soon as that is done, this is what I have. And then a two band cap is ready. So, I'm going to place this on my dummy head and then I'll show us the finished outlook of our design. I'll just set this aside. Now, Coming down to the design itself, starting with the twist, I have my fabric cut out already, so I'll just be stating out the measurement. For the twist, we'll be needing two pieces of fabric, and then this is my first piece of fabric. So the length is 30 inches, and the width is 5.5 inches, okay? 30 inches for the length and 5.5 inches for the width. 
cut it out twice for two different pieces of fabric. Now, in addition to this, we are going to be padding this for the twist design. We also be needing our wording or padded. Now, I have mine here and it's a very thick one. So, the same measurement applies to this also. This is 30 inches by 5.5 inches. And you are cutting this out twice. Okay, we'll be padding the fabric for the twist and we'll be using this. So, that is it for the twist. Now, having done that, coming down to the Coming over crinoline. to the crinoline, which was used for the design, I have my crinoline here. For this tutorial, I'll be making use of three yards. Now, if you observe carefully, find out that the edges have been weaved. Now, you can make use of fishing line, size 0 0.90. You take it down to a weaving store and they use fishing line to weave the edges for you. Or you make use of a matching color of thread to weave the edges. Remember, it is three yards of crinoline, and then that is it for the crinoline aspect. Now, coming over to the bow design, I have two pieces of fabric here, and then the first piece of fabric is 23 inches by 5 inches. 23 inches by 5 inches. And then for the second piece of fabric, I have 21 inches by 5 inches. 21 inches by 5 inches so so we'll be using these two pieces of fabric to form the board design now the board design also has a loop for the loop i have my fabric here and then it is 5 inches by 7 inches this is what i'm going to be using for the loop 5 inches by 7 inches and then in addition to that, still on the bow design, I'm going to be making use of crinoline, okay? And then this crinoline I'm using, the width is 2 inches, needing the hard kind of crinoline so that the design can stand, needing 2 inches. So I'm going to still be needing the same length as that of the fabric for the bow design. That is that. Then, the last but not the least for my fabric, is the handle for my twist okay and I have two pieces of fabric this is going to be serving as the handle for my twist and each piece of fabric is five inches for the width and nine inches for the length so at the end of our twist we are going to be adding this at the end and so that is all for the fabric that is needed now starting the tutorial properly I'm going to get the fabric for the twist remember two pieces of fabric 30 inches by 5.5 .5 inches and then this is the second piece of fabric so i'm going to be using one piece of fabric to illustrate remember we also cut out the same measurement for the wording which we are going to be using to pad the fabric now now i also have my wording here now your wording or your pad like i said i'm using a thick one has two parts there's a part that has gum that shines and then there's another part that is wool-like or hairy. That part has no gum. That is the wrong side. So I'm going to place my fabric this way. The wrong side of my fabric is going to be facing me. Why the fine side of my fabric is going to be facing my working table? Why the part of my wording that has gum is going to be facing my fabric this way? It's going to be facing the wrong side of my fabric. So what I'll do is I'll get my iron, electric iron that has been plugged to a source of power supply and I'm going to iron this out from one end to the other end and then as soon as I'm done with that I'm going to go ahead to fold my fabric into two this way I'll fold my fabric into two and I'm going to sew from one end down to the other end now whatever I'm doing for this fabric is the same thing I also have to repeat for the second piece of fabric so as to get the twisted design so I'm done sewing. So this is my first piece of fabric, and then this is it. So I'm going to turn this inside out and repeat the same thing for the second piece of fabric. So after turning my fabric inside out, I have this here. So this is how it looks like. Now we'll be using this to form the twisted design. So I'm just going to place one end on the other end this way with the same part in the middle 
and I'm going to be stitching this down okay I'll stitch this down using my needle and thread because it's a little too thick for my sewing machine but if you can still stitch with your sewing machine it's okay so I'll stitch this end to secure it then we now proceed to make our to make our um, twist on the fabric so I'm going to be stitching this together So after stitching this together, I'm going to start with my twist. You can either get someone to help you hold that end or place down a very heavy object down at that point to help you hold it in place. So, and then I will just start with my twist this way. So I will just keep making my twist, if I want it to be tight, I have to pull it down in that order. And then, as soon as I get to the end of my fabric, I will just stack the edges close down together, just like I did when I started. And then that is how to achieve the twist. So this is my twist. At the end of the day, I have tacked down this end the same way I tacked down this end. So this is how my twist looks like. And then. To complete it, I'm going to get my fabric, okay? The fabric for the handle. Remember, we cut out two pieces of fabric, and then the measurement for each piece of fabric was five inches for the width and nine inches for the length. So I'm going to get both pieces of fabric, and then we'll be creating the handle with it. So this is it. Now for the handle, I'm going to fold my fabric into two. And I'm going to sew from one end to the other. The same thing applies to the other fabric. Now you also have the option of cutting off the edge a bit, okay? In order to reduce the handle and make it tiny. Because the more tiny the handle is, the more it will stretch. Okay? So that is optional. And then this is what I mean. You can also decrease the length this way. Just trim it off. At some point, okay, but I'm just going to stitch now. Close down this end and I'll get back. So, this is my piece of fabric after stitching, and then I'm going to proceed now to turn the fabric inside out. So, after turning it inside out, I'll get my twist now. I'm going to fold in this edge a bit because of the fraying end, I'll fold it in a bit and then attach one end place one end inside one end of my twist inside the fabric for the hand to this way so this is it and then I will my needle and thread and stitch the twist and this handle together the same thing applies to this other end I'll frame this I'll fold in this ring end and then pass in this end inside the fabric so this is it and then I'm going to stitch it down again. So this is my twist with my hand. So when it comes to twisting, first, sorry to tack, and I have to make sure that the two ends, that is of the hand, the two ends, they have the same length, okay? And then I'm going to pass my needle and thread from inside the twist down to the fabric this way. This is a matching color of thread for yours and then that's how i'm going to take it back inside now i'll make big stitches inside the twist and then you only see small stitches at the fine side so i'll keep going that order So this is it. I'll pass my needle and thread through that spot where my thread is coming from and then make big stitches inside with the wording and the fabric come out from the next point. 
stitch down there again so as to secure it to that point then pass it inside again that same spot and then come out from the next spot so i will tack this other side the same way again and then i'll secure my thread at this point by tacking several times The same thing happens to the other end, like I explained. So this is it. And so when you go around it, you will not be able to make out the way it will start. I'm this at this point. I'm done attaching both ends, and I'm going to tie this on my dummy head without the band base to show us how it looks like. So this is my twisted fabric on my dummy head, and then this is the back view where it was tied. The reason for this allowance is because the human head is a bit bigger than the dummy head, so this is it. And then we we'll proceed to work on other um, designs as well. Now coming over to the fabric for the twist. Remember the first piece of fabric is 23 inches for the length. The second piece of fabric is also 21 inches for the length, and then for the loop. We have 5 inches by 7 inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold each piece of fabric into two. And I'm going to be sewing from one end to the other. And then while folding your fabric, the fine side should be inside. While the wrong side should be outside. So this is it. And I'm going to stitch now and get back. I'm done um, sewing each fabric. What is now left for me is to turn... Each of the fabric inside out so this is it now to continue for the first two pieces of fabric I'm going to get my crinoline and then I'm going to be passing it this is it like I said it's two inches I'm going to be passing it inside now if you are using the soft kind of crinoline you may need to double it so that it can have so that it can be stiff stiffer like and come out stiffer so that's what I'm just going to do. And I'm going to pass this inside for each piece of the fabric that I have here that I'll be using to form the design. So whatever I'm doing for this first piece of fabric is the same thing that I'll also be doing for the second piece of fabric that I have. So this is it. As you can see, the sewn part is at the middle of my fabric. And then I'm trying to set my fabric in place properly. So this is it. And I'm done with this. For both pieces of fabric, I have my crinoline inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it into this way. I'll take it down to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch this part down. I'll also do the same thing for the other side. I'll stitch this end down. Now while folding into this, is how it should look like. The sewn part should be at the middle here because this is going to be the wrong side of the fabric so after sewing i have my fabric this way i've also cut off the excess now i'm going to fold it turn it inside out this way turn the other one inside out this way now the sewn part is going to be at the middle this way and then i'm going to be stitching it i'm going to be stitching everything together to join it together so to do that having placed the sewn part at the middle I'm going to pass my needle and thread inside this way and then I'll secure it at that point and I'm going to be pleating it this way or better still making a running stitch through it like this I'm going to be pleating it this way or better still making a running stitch through it like this so this is it this is for the first one and then the same thing applies to the second one position the sewn part at the middle on the other side and then I'm going to be making a running stitch through it
and so I have it this way. Now to secure this, I'm going to pull my thread and then knot everything down at the middle, okay? I can tack down or better still tie like I'm doing. I will tie everything down at the middle. So this is it. Then I will secure and cut off my SS thread. So this is it. Now remember the last fabric which we are going to be using as our loop that we have sewn and folded it inside out. I'm going to be placing it down this way and I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and stitch. Then I will cut off the excess and after doing that I will turn it to the other side. Now please notice the way my fabric is positioned. Okay, I have the sewn part here. I have the sewn part at the middle because this is the wrong side. So this is my double bow and I'm done. Stitch, I've turned it inside out and I've dragged the sewn part to the back. So this is it. Now I'm going to set this aside. Coming over to the last design, which is going to be a crinoline design. I have my crinoline here and I also have the edges weaved. Now to start with, I will start by um, folding this edge. Okay, and I'm going to be tacking it down. The essence of this is to prevent the is to secure the edge because of the fraying edges now you can either tack down or you tie with your thread whichever one you prefer so the same thing i'm doing for this end is the same thing i repeat for the other end so having done that i'm going to start making my running stitch so i will make my running stitch this way at the other end i'll pass my needle and thread And then I'll keep making my running stitch. So just pass your needle and thread in and out. So after some time, after passing it in and out, I'll come down to tack it a bit. And then after a while of making my running stitch, I'll tack it down together. So I'll pass back my needle and thread, and then I'll keep making my running stitch. And after stitching down together a while, after a while of stitching down, I'm going to tack it all together. So let's say I'm stopping at this end. I'll put my thread together this way. And then this is it. Then I'll pass my needle and thread through the edge to secure it together. So this is it and then this is how it looks like so i'll continue in that order i'll make my running stitch and after a while stitch everything down together So this is it. Now I'm going to go ahead to stitch it again down to the previous split. So that is what I'll keep doing till I've done that to the entire cloning fabric that I have here. And then I'll get back after that. So this is my work and I'm done tacking the other end of the crinoline together and then this is what I get so you can see how it looks like. Now to continue I'm going to be tack, uh, tacking this down to the back of the twist. So I'll first get my twist on my dummy head this way to enable me get the fitting okay I know the right position for my crinoline design then I'll get my crinoline 
and then I'll start fitting it. Do I want it at the middle or do I want it to be towards the right side or towards the left side? As soon as I've gotten the position for it, I'll then take it off this way and I'm going to be tacking the crinoline down to the end of the twist. So this is it and I've got my position for it. Now I'll be passing my needle and thread okay, from the back towards the see where my needle and thread is coming out from forward but it's still beneath it's still at the base of the twist okay so i'll secure it at that point and then since the margin color of thread it will not be so obvious i will take back my needle and thread through that same spot and then take it all the way to the back coming out from the crinoline so I'll just pull my needle and thread and then I'll keep tacking in that manner okay I'll keep securing the edge of my crinoline down to the base of my twist So that's what I'm still trying to do here. I want it, I want to pack it in such a way that the crinoline will stand, okay? The crinoline is going to stand and it's not lie flat. It will stand together with my twisted design. That is just what I want to achieve. I want the crinoline to stand together with the twisted design. So I'll keep tacking in this manner. If there are any lapses or loophole, I will keep checking to so that I can be able to adjust it and then set it down properly. So always be mindful of how and where you are passing your thread. Now, if you have to pass your needle and thread through the top, it should come out from in between the in between the pleat, okay? Like this part now where my needle and thread is coming out from this is my needle see in between the pleats this way in between the twists i meant to say so that it will be hidden okay and then i'm going to tack this i'm going to complete the tacking off camera and after that i'll get back to show us the finished look so after adding the crinoline down to the twist you can see the way Following the way it was stacked, it is now standing firm on its own together with the twist. So if you want your design now to be detachable, because at this point we have not yet um, added the tuban base to the dummy head. So it can be one like this without the tuban base to now be a detachable design. Except you want it to be non-detachable, then you have to go ahead to tack down the twist down to the tuban base. However, the main point here is that the crinoline is standing on its own at the back of the twist and that is what i want to get us to take that is what i want us to get so why tacking you know how to go about it in order to achieve that now coming to the other design we're going to be adding this is the crinoline and the twist we have the fabric for the bow design here so i'm going to be placing it down this way and i'm going to be tacking it still using my needle and thread so you place however in whatever way that suits you down to the crinoline so you can tack together with the twist and then tack some part of the crinoline down to it again and then that's that so as soon as that is done coming to the back you can see the way the back here is rough you are free to make another bow design to cover up the back you can cover with your Appliques, your trimmings, your accessories, your flat accessory, your beads, whatever, or your brooch, whatever you have or whatever you prefer to use. Okay, so I have this applique right here, and I'm going to be using this to embellish the back. So, what I'll just do is to apply gum, and then I'm going to be placing it down this way. And so, you see, after doing this, 
the rough edges from taking the quinoline will be hidden so this is a form of embellishment on its own so i'm going to do all that first and foremost i'm going to proceed with tacking down my bow design down to my twist and my crinoline and then thereafter i will glue down my accessory to the back and then i'll get back to show us the final outlook okay now when it comes to tacking the bow down to the design kindly watch the way i positioned it on my on my design okay the bow is a little um on top of it is placed a little bit on top of the twist okay so that i can pass my needle and the thread from the twist down to the base of the fabric for the of this loop fabric for the bow and then i will tack it down before tacking with the crinoline so pass my needle and thread from the top oh god i don't know if you can really see this from the top of the twist and then it's going to come out from the fabric for the loop design okay beneath it beneath the fabric for the loop design that's where it's going to be coming out from so see it's coming out from the base this way and then i'm going to pass my needle and thread through that same spot it's coming out from down to the top of the twist again now if i want to take it through the crinoline i can all if i want to take the crinoline to to tack down the crinoline together i can as well do that so this is it i've tacked down that part now to continue this is the top of the twist you can see where my thread is coming out from I, i'll go back through that same spot where my thread is coming out from and then make big twist and uh, big stitches inside the twist this way and then as soon as my thread is out from the next spot i'm going to pass it again down through the fabric through the fabric for the loop at the base so with this my stitching becomes invisible and then the thread is not going to be so obvious but then at some point it does not really mean if the thread shows so far you are using a matching color of thread so i'll take my needle and thread back to the same spot where it's coming out from down to the top of the twist So I will ensure that it is properly secured down to the twist before I proceed to tack down to the crinoline, okay? So I'll just tack down to the crinoline off camera before getting back. So this is the front view of my design and then this is the back view of it. You can as well go ahead to embellish with your stones or pearls as you desire and then I'm going to place this on the dummy head to show us the outcome now this is a detachable design so your twist can be worn together with your bow and your crinoline alone the two band cap can be also can also be worn separately or you can decide to wear both together so without the two band base this is how the design looks like and then i'm going to add the two band base to show us how both will look like so together with the two band base this is the final outlook like i said earlier if you want it to make if you want to make it a non-detachable design all you have to do is that you get your needle and thread and then tack down the twist down to the base at this point that everything has been added to it or even before you add your crinoline and your bow to it you tack down the twist down to the base so this is the front view and then this is the back view so you can see the way the accessory is used at the back as a form of embellishment and also to cover the rough edges of the crinoline so that is it for this design and then this is our finished work if you look carefully in front of it i added my brooch on it that's optional you can use any other accessory in place of it thank you so much for watching this brings us to the end of this tutorial please like share and leave a comment in the comment section